She may not have had the biggest roles in the hit series based on Philip Pullman's best-selling books, but she made an impression on fans all the same. Sister Clara on His Dark Materials was played by Morfitt Clark, and if you just became a fan after watching the series, there's a lot you don't know about her. In today's video, we're sharing the top 10 things you definitely haven't heard about Morfitt, and some of them are pretty insane. First off, at number 10, we've got her unexpected roots. For anyone who's been following Morfitt and her work for a while, they probably see her as one of the British actors taking over Hollywood right now. While it's true for the most part, since she's technically from Wales, she was actually born somewhere completely different. The actress was born in Sweden since her dad used to work there at the time, but her family is still Welsh, and they moved back there when she was a few years older. After settling in Cardiff, she was raised there for the rest of her childhood and youth along with all of her family. Even though she wasn't born in Wales, her heritage is all Welsh, and she's openly considered herself to be Welsh before. Both her parents, along with the entire family, are from Wales, and even her name has strong Welsh origins. Coming in at number 9, this might just have gotten her into acting. There aren't many stars who are open about mental illnesses and disorders. While conditions like depression and anxiety are all part of the conversation now, there's still a lot of silence around conditions like ADHD and dyslexia. Well, we can count Morfit out since she has both, and she's been super open about it. The actress was diagnosed with ADHD or a attention deficit hyperactivity disorder when she was really young, and she's been dealing with it ever since. Like most people with the condition, she found it hard to focus at school and didn't have the best grades because of it. But then she discovered that she could only concentrate and focus when she was performing or playing a role, and she's been acting ever since. We're all lucky that she found a way to deal with her condition since now we get to see her amazing roles on screen. When she was older, she also found out she had dyslexia, which added to her struggle with classes at school. But again, she's said that it isn't an issue for her when she's acting, even though she has to read heavy scripts all the time. Now for number 8, Morfed is a dropout. We've already talked about the actress's struggles with schools and studying, especially since she has a condition that makes it much more difficult to work and focus. On top of that, she'd already discovered her love for acting. Naturally, the next thought was, why even bother finishing school? Yes, that's right, Morfed actually left school when she was 16 years old. Since she already knew she didn't enjoy it, she also didn't want the burden of college or any else to do with studying, so she left school as soon as she could. Right after leaving, she found herself wanting to act, and soon enough, she had already started booking some smaller roles. As a theater actress, she moved to London, where she enrolled in the Drama Center London to learn acting professionally. From there, it was easy for her to see that acting was her calling, not formal education, and she carried on with it until we saw her as Sister Clara. For number 7, she's been working way longer than you thought. Unless you're a child actor who stars on Disney or Nickelodeon, there aren't many people in the industry who started work the second they left school. After all, it takes a few years to get that kind of experience you need to book bigger roles, and Morfid wanted to get started on that as soon as possible. She actually joined young theater groups as soon as she left school at 16, with her first role being in According to Brian Haw, which was at the British Youth Music Theater. Later on, she joined the National Youth Theater of Wales as well. Her career has been super diverse so far, with a good mix of stage work, movies, and TV, which is uncommon for actors these days. Theater requires a lot more effort than being on screen, and Morfit is an expert in every area. Theater was actually one of the biggest parts of her career for a long time, and with her big involvement in youth theater, she was able to get expertise at a really young age. Next, number 6, she's been all about Shakespeare. When you know someone's done theater professionally, there's only one name that comes to mind. Who else would compare someone to A Summer's Day or write that iconic balcony scene? Just to add even more to her stellar credits, Morfit has done a lot of Shakespeare, which is a huge deal since his plays are some of the most important and prestigious in the theater world. One of her biggest roles was Cordelia in King Lear, and fans and critics alike agreed that her performance was outstanding. Her Shakespeare legacy focused mostly on lead roles in Bard's most famous plays. Coming back to the balcony scene, she's actually played Juliet in Romeo and Juliet before. This was another huge role for her, and the production was at the Crucible Theater in Sheffield. In recent years, she's been focusing more on her movie and TV career, which is what's gotten her most of her fan following. But we're sure she's going to go back to her roots at some point, and we might see her on stage again soon. Moving on, you definitely didn't know number 5. Film, TV, and theater, Morfet already has talent in every single department. But did you know there's actually another kind of acting that she can do? In fact, she can do it so well that she was almost given an award for it. In 2017, she and the entire cast of Les Laisons d'Angevruze were nominated for an Audi Award, which is the awards show 
show dedicated to audiobooks and other audio projects. The cast alongside her was pretty great too. It included Dominic West, who's known for huge shows like The Wire and The Affair, Una Stubbs, who is a major theater actor with roles in shows like Sherlock, and Elaine Cassidy, known for Harper's Island and Felicia's Journey. The cast was nominated for a play reading that was turned into an audiobook later on. In the end, they didn't win, and the award went to the audiobook of the Jody Pickold novel Small Great Things, which was read by Broadway veteran Audra McDonald. Up next, 4 is a little creepy. One of her biggest roles was the starring part in St. Maud, and if anything, it just shows how much of a versatile actress she is. The woman can really play any type of character. The movie follows Maud, a nurse who becomes obsessed with one mission in life. It just happens to be saving a patient's soul from eternal damnation. All in a day's work, right? The film explores some heavy themes, such as Maud's relationship with religion and how it affects her life and the people around her. The film debuted at the Toronto International Film Festival, and critics were raving about it as soon as it came out. With Saint Maud, she cemented herself as a talented actress with a huge range, and her career has only been seeing new highs ever since. For number three, she took over an especially iconic role. How do you know if you've made it as an actor? Well, you get cast in something as big as Lord of the Rings. Morfett had no trouble knowing her career had started up since she played a young Galadriel in the Amazon adaptation of the best-selling books. To put things into context, the actress hadn't had the most major film career before this, so it was a huge deal for her when it happened. Critics and fans both loved her in the show, and it basically confirmed that she was Hollywood's next big thing. Coming in at number 2, she's no stranger to creepy roles. One of the BBC's biggest projects in 2020 was Dracula, based on the Bram Stoker novel. The adaptation was produced by Stephen Moffat and Mark Gattis, who also brought us the iconic Sherlock series on BBC. Morfitt took over the role of Mina Harker, the fiancé of the main character Jonathan. We see her interacting with famous characters such as the Van Helsings and the three-part series is available to stream on Netflix worldwide. Finally, number one just goes to show how talented she is. If we hadn't already convinced you that the Welsh star is one of the most talented and skilled ladies on the scene right now, this last fact definitely will. In the personal history of David Copperfield based on the Charles Dickens novel, she played the role of Dora, which we all saw and loved. But what you don't know is that she actually had two roles in the movie. She also played David's mother, a role where almost nobody could recognize her. And we still don't know if it was always the plan or if she was just a last minute stand in. That's a wrap for this video. Did you know any of these facts? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.